welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. Today we are back, we're going to be doing an upgrade to our 3D printer today. This is the, we actually don't know what it is, it's essentially a GTEC um, Prusa i3 clone. Now, this didn't have any brands on it, the box is unbranded, the only thing that I have to identify it is this CTC D5282, I don't know what that means, I've looked, it doesn't have any branding on it. However, the board is a GTEC. Uh, GTEC 2560, I believe. Um, so I'm guessing it comes from the same factory. Anyway, like most of these Prusa based, uh, Prusa i3 based models, they tend to suffer from this Z wobble issue. If I get my calibration cube out again, you have a look at this, you'll see that, that little notch just where my finger is. Just there. Essentially, what that is is as the printer moves up the Z axis as it's printing on the bed, the wobble in this bar the Z-axis uh, threaded rod translates into the Z-axis carrier which essentially moves the, the, the Z-axis across as it's printing and you end up with like, like little juts. If you look at the edge you can see it's all over the place. It really should be perfectly straight. But what's happening is this Z-rod as it wobbles translates into this mount which essentially translates into the whole carriage, the X carriage assembly moving left and right very, very, very subtly as you print, resulting in issues like this. This is also possibly another issue, but we're going to attempt to fix it by solving the Z-Wobble. Okay, so I've just found this model here on Thingiverse. This is a, uh, essentially it's a replacement for this section here. Now, this, this brass nut uh, is, is actually tied into this piece of plastic, which is threaded onto the threaded rod. So obviously as the threaded rod moves up and the wobble is introduced, the brass nut will move with it along with this carriage here. Now, what this replacement part does is you take that threaded nut and you basically screw it into here. Then you thread this onto the threaded rod underneath the carriage, replacing the connection to this point here. So essentially this linear bearing rail will then sit flush on this uh, this extrusion here on the side, I'm going to call it an extrusion, allowing it to just rest on there. Now, as the as the new I don't know what you call it, <laughs> as the new piece goes, uh, let's just call it the Y carriage holder. As the Y carriage, sorry, Z carriage holder. As the Z carriage holder then goes up the threaded rod, what will happen? I'm going to pretend that it's on this side, but what will happen is it will the the wobble will be translated underneath just like this. Um, as it lifts this up, as it's resting on that uh, that extrusion that hangs out on the edge. So we're gonna we're gonna print this on the three D printer. It may not come out in the best quality. We may have to do some cleanup with some sandpaper and some files just to get it nice. But it will eliminate the Z wobble problem, and then we can print another set with a printer that doesn't have the Z wobble problem for a cleaner result later. Alrighty, and we're back. Just in one hour and 42 minutes, you two can print tiny little plastic things at home. Now, I'm just kidding. All jokes aside, these have come out absolutely fantastically. So, you can probably see, now that I have these in person, how this is going to work. Essentially, this little uh, area here receives this brass nut, and then it uh, threads onto the threaded rod again, and this opening section here, then sort of leans underneath this and sort of just carries on it, just rests it, it's not physically attached. So as the threaded rod moves up and down, this levers up and down the, um, the Z axis. So I'm just going to pop these off the bed if I can. Let's give this a shot with my fingers, see if we can get that off the bed. There we go, there's one. Alright, so I've got the pieces off the bed now. You can have a look how these look. The bottom layer, it's not perfect, but it will definitely do for the purposes that we're looking for at the moment. The actual edges are not too bad at all on this, I think. Uh, if we have a look at that, they're fairly straight. Everything is where it needs to be. There's a couple of little dribbles on there, uh, which we'll clean up, you know, as we make these upgrades for the printer. But overall, the quality of those edges is not bad at all. Okay. 
so it's a new day at the moment and I'm back we have the pieces that um, we need to perform the Z axis adjustment I'm just moving the Z axis all the way to the top so that I can then separate the top panels and then install these pieces now I just wanted to take a moment to talk about failure and the reason that I think 3d printing still isn't really a mainstream um, uh, a mainstream thing it's still kind of a hobby and it's still uh, mostly used you know commercially and, and in places like that so hobbies and professionals um, hobbies and professionals I mean to say this is <laughs> failure right here essentially these are all different tests of the same pieces that I've been trying to print the original design that I used um, I mean, measure measure twice, uh, cut once, but um, essentially the original design I used didn't line up with these uh, Z-axis rods. So if you have a look at this, um, also it uh, it doesn't it doesn't fit very easily. It's not really supposed to do that. Let's have a look at the pieces that that do work. These fit correctly with no wobble or very minimal wobble um, in any direction. Um, I just wanted to say like. You know, with a printer that doesn't have the the ability to print to tolerances. So, for instance, this rod we know is exactly eight millimeters, and we're asking the 3D printer that has problems with wobbling in every axis uh, to give us a part that has an eight millimeter gap. Then that's not going to work because in every direction it will wobble in. Let's say one millimeter will end up with a six millimeter gap. So. There's always going to be that problem until the printer is truly calibrated and truly able to give you the result that you're looking for that it will not be able to print to within the tolerances that you specify. Uh, so with that said, I modified these parts to have a 10 millimeter gap uh, and then I reprinted them and if you have a look closely, the, the gap is just so close. It's bang on. There's a tiny amount of of, uh, of space in between them, but very marginal. So we're going to go ahead and disassemble the Z, uh, the Z axis, remove the X carriage, and then we'll take off these brass, these are called lead screws, I've since found out. We'll take off the brass lead screws and replace them onto these uh, uh, Z axis supports, I guess we call them, uh, and essentially, they will do this with the wobbling and they will basically allow the X carriage to rest on them and then that will lift the X carriage rather than relying on the lead screw. So with that said, let's go ahead and uh, get started. I've turned the printer on, raised the, uh, raised the Z axis, I'm just going to turn the printer off now. We'll start disassembling and then installation. Okay, so as you can see, we've disassembled the X carriage. The next thing I'm going to do is take these, uh, I think they're brass, brass lead screws, off of this assembly. Okay, I'm going to try and get in frame here, but as you can see, we have the brass lead screw, and we also have these um, Z axis wobble stoppers. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this, and I'm going to place it in here, lining up the screw holes with the screw holes on the Z wobble part. Once we have that pressed in, you should be able to see straight through there like that. And this is the new Z wobble uh, fix. So then all we need to do is making sure that we have the top surface clean. And I've just realized I've put the wrong surface on the top. I want the smooth surface on the top. And then we're just gonna line those up and press fit the two together. Until that clips in like that and we can see straight through the holes. The next thing we're gonna do is just take our screws and thread them back in from the underside, making sure that we don't have any of the screw poking out the top. So what I might do is I might swap these over for a set of smaller screws, it's like three millimeter screws, so they only bite in about that far. So these are the screws that came with the printer. I'm just gonna swap these out for four of these. And these will bite in just enough to grip, but not enough to protrude through the top. So I'm gonna replace those in there like that. And I believe these are M3 and just screw those in straight through the plastic. 
Okay, now once that's in, just repeat the same steps for the other side until we have two of these parts. Okay, so once you're done, you should have two pieces that look like this. Essentially, these are the Z-wobble fixes, as I've said. What we're going to do is, we're going to thread them, let me just adjust the camera. We're going to thread these facing the correct way onto the rod so that they come down and they're about the same height. It doesn't really matter at this point. We'll have to realign our Z-axis later, but we're just going to thread these on uh, for the moment and have them facing in the correct directions, which should be left and right to the openings, like that. Okay. So once you've got the uh, x-axis back on, you can just attempt to level it a little bit, just get it as close as possible for now. Hold it in place while you're doing this, because you don't want to break anything. Make sure that everything is out of the way, filaments, cables, nothing is in the wrong places as far as the cables go. And then we can take our threaded rods and place them back into our printer through the linear bearings, through the Z-wobble fix, and straight down into the socket on the base plate at the bottom. Okay, once everything is installed, the uh, Z-axis should now look like this. You will need to recalibrate your Z-stop, because this is going to change the offset from the base of this plate by, you know, a factor of however thick this piece is. It looks like about 8.8, .8, um of a centimeter. Um, go ahead and adjust all of your cables back to how they should be and then re-level your Z just by um, what, I, what I usually do is I'll take a um, a metal ruler and I'll place it onto the uh, the X axis rod and I'll measure up to the top of the frame which for me is just over five centimeters. I'll do the same thing here and then I can see that this is 0.1 lower than this side. So I'll raise this side until that's in calibration. Actually, I'll just get these perfectly to five. So that's bang on five. I'll do the same thing for this one. Get that perfectly on five. There we go, so that's calibrated now. So this is now in alignment. So as you can see, any wobble that would have been translated into the X carriage is now being taken up by this piece here. As you can see, it's wobbling ever so slightly left and right. What that's done is that's now stopped the wobble from this threaded rod translating into this piece and then into our print head. Just before we go ahead and do our first print on this, I'm going to use a Q-tip and just a little bit of silicone spray, um, and I'm going to put the silicone spray on the Q-tip and then I'm going to rub it onto the intersection of these two parts. Now, I had a quick Google People have said that silicon spray is okay with PLA type plastic. I don't know if that is the case. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but do this at your own risk. Alright, so as you've seen, the print is finally done, and my god, what an improvement. Look at the difference in these layers here. So if you have a look, this is the original test cube. I'm just tapping it on the top right now. This was done before the upgrade, and if you look at the edges that are just in here, you can see all of this misalignment on the Z-axis as the print head moves up the piece. Now, on the new print, there's still a little bit of that now. One thing I'd just like to say is at the bottom of this print, I had the feed rate set too high, so we've sort of got this sort of squished and out look. Um, that's a result of having too much filament coming out of the print head um, while I was printing this. I adjusted that mid-print, and the adjustment took place probably around this layer here. So as you can see, that's where that curving stops, and we end up with a very smooth... Uh, Z axis after this upgrade. Now, I've got a flashlight with me. I'll just shine some light on these so that you can see, hopefully, in better quality, just the surface finish of that piece. It's much better than the last piece. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, 
please leave a like. This video took a lot of work to get done, a lot of trial and error. Um, I hope you really enjoyed this. Please leave a comment asking any questions, if you have suggestions or feedback, or any ideas for modifications that I can do to this printer to get an even better print quality out of it. Please don't hesitate to let me know. I uh, hope you have a great day, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.